Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash pro revenge. Today, we have one more set of great revenge stories. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. And our first story. Never underestimate the fury of a quiet man. A little over 10 years ago, when I was a young carpenter, I met a guy who I'll call Chad, because F Chad. Chad was a new hire by the company I was working for and became my helper. We got along famously, even though he was 10 years older than me and didn't mind working under a 23-year-old carpenter as an apprentice. Chad and I had worked together for six months when he brought up the idea of starting a business together. He figured between the two of us, we could easily run a crew and build houses. After talking it over with my pregnant girlfriend, now wife, we decided that it'd be better for me to be an employee, but still a 50% partner for tax reasons and insurance purposes. Chad said that was fine with him, so we started laying out who was to take care of certain aspects of the business. Chad was to be the guy to find work, as I look and still do way younger than I am, and it doesn't instill a lot of confidence in a client to think their framer is 16. Chad was also able to take care of payroll, insurance, and any other financial factions. My duties were simple, staff and run the crew, and keep on budget, something that came easily to me. I was to be paid an hourly wage as well as 50% of profit after all business expenses. I never took my profit draw as I rolled it back into the growing company. Things were great for about six months. The crew was working well together, we had a few houses under our belts and a contract for a 10,000 square foot custom house with multiple outbuildings. Things were great. So Chad has never built a foundation, and we usually hired a crew to put the foundation in for us, as like I said, Chad has never built one, and I personally hate concrete work. We couldn't get our normal foundation crew in, so I stepped up and said, F it, I'll do it myself. The company we were building for is one of the best custom home builders around, and doing a good job on this house could mean that we wouldn't have to pound the pavement looking for work. Work would be given to us. Perfect arrangement. Until it wasn't. Chad started spending money like it was going out of style. He sold his 2500 Chevy pickup and bought a new Jeep Wrangler. He had the Jeep for about a month before he sunk it in water while 4x4ing and it caught on fire, mysteriously a few days later. He received the insurance payout and bought a brand new Dodge 2500 Power Wagon which he, in short order, sunk in water within a few weeks. I never noticed the red flags as Chad and I rarely spoke face to face. He was the business side, I was the get crap done side. I finished the foundation and picked up the check from the builder. The builder said that we overbilled him by 25%, but he was happy with the work we'd done, but not to overbill again, as he doesn't like overpaying, as there may not be any money left at the end of the build. I apologized and asked him to cancel the check and issue one for the work actually completed. He agreed and said, I'm so happy to have honest people working for me. I usually don't pick up the checks, nor did I ever really look at the books as it wasn't in the scope of my responsibilities. This prompted me to log into our corporate account and see that we're so far in the red, we couldn't afford to buy a red pen, let alone cover payroll. I showed up at Chad's house and tore a strip off of him. He apologized and promised to top up the account with his personal profit draw money. I go to work Monday and find the locks on our tool bin had been changed my name removed from all accounts, and a letter taped to the tool bin stating I was dismissed from my duties for an undisclosed reason. I was effing furious. I was not aware that as a business partner I could be fired. I found another job quite quickly and tried my best to put it behind me. That's when I found out where the money was going, and that Chad had been slandering my name around town, blaming me for the missing money as well as a bunch of egregious statements about my work ethic, trade skills, mental stability, and home life. Now, I fastidiously tracked all of our interactions with a simple journal and had backups of the transactions of our business account. I also happened to have backups of all of our texts, voicemails, and pictures of everything. This is the revenge part. I took the evidence to my father's lawyer friend who started a fraud slash embezzlement investigation through the CRA, that's Canadian Revenue Agency, Canada's IRS, and called the insurance provider to make sure they were being paid. They'd never received anything. I called the builder whom we were building for and explained what was happening. 
He told me that Chad had essentially stolen around $30,000 for payment of work not completed and had broken into their office and stolen another $15,000 replacement value of equipment and tools. I did what anyone would do. I called the police. The police said they couldn't help me and said it was a civil case, and the builder said he wasn't going to sue as Chad had no money and it wasn't worth the headache. So I called his auto insurance company, sent them all the pictures of his sunk vehicles, texts about them, and a short video he sent of him lighting the Jeep on fire. Insurance company filed charges against Chad and won. He's now on the hook for around $130,000. I've spent the last nine and a half years telling anyone who'll listen about Chad and have him essentially blackballed from the carpentry industry around here, because it's not slander if it's true. I've also looked up his criminal history as its public domain every three months or so and make a point of showing up at his court proceedings or offering myself as a character reference for the Crown, prosecution. So I've gone out of my way to remind Chad that he can't F me over without repercussions. And no, this doesn't end here. Years have passed, and I'm still PO'd. I receive a call from a guy offering me a job. It was the builder that Chad screwed over, not remembering that we know each other. After I explained who I was, and this bridge is burnt due to Chad, he still offers me the job. Medical, dental, company van, gas card, corporate credit card, I accept his offer. First order of business, finds another way to F with Chad. Through the grapevine, I find where Chad is living and working, new boss calls the company Chad is working for, and Chad is summarily fired. I get in touch with Chad's landlord, explain how he operates, Chad is evicted for unpaid rent. He was apparently a couple months behind. I also managed to get his girlfriend's phone number, call her, and explain what this guy does to people and his extensive criminal history, including, but not limited to, fraud, identity theft, insurance fraud, his many assaults, and his wanted picture published in the paper. Turns out she's the owner of his truck, primary operator, but he pays the insurance. He cannot insure a vehicle until he pays off what he owes for the fraud. She asked me what she should do. I say I'll take care of that. I call the insurance provider, explain what's going on, for them to tell me he doesn't even have a license anymore. They void the insurance on his girlfriend's truck after speaking to her and set up a sting with the police. I personally get to be involved as I knew what was going on. So I sit and wait for the day as it goes down. I roll up behind the unmarked police car, quickly explain who I am and what my plans are. The police are thinking that they're just waiting to pull him over for driving without a license and no insurance. I say, I'm going to call him immediately as soon as I see him. So he comes cruising out and I make the call. He actually picked up the phone to call me a bunch of names and the N-word. I'm as white as the fresh fallen snow. And promptly gets pulled over. Police issue a ticket for reckless driving, no seatbelt, no license, using a handheld device. During this, the girlfriend pulls up and proceeds to give consent to search her truck. In the truck, they find multiple IDs, stolen credit cards, a couple ATM skimmer machines, and a fake police badge. He was arrested on the spot. His judgment was eight years in jail after being granted time and a half for time served, a $100,000 fine, 1,000 hours community service after release, and no possibility of parole. Never underestimate the fury of a quiet man. And our next story. Revenge to the tune of $50,000 plus on owner who wrongfully fired me. I applied for a job as a bar manager at a new resto bar that opened up in my area, Ontario, Canada. The owner of this bar had some issues with her liquor license being revoked at a previous establishment, and there was some sort of stipulation, this part I'm not clear on, where she was required to not be on site or involved in the business in any capacity for any reason. She was a prohibited person, and I believe she made her husband the owner on paper, but for this story, she's referred to as the owner. Hire a manager with five plus years experience and a smart serve certificate to run and be responsible for the bar in order to get another liquor license. After a short interview process, I was offered the job and told of these terms. I accepted them despite the already apparent red flags. I was a very poor student. When the restaurant slash bar opened, everything fell apart quickly. Despite the owner not being allowed to be on premises, she proceeded to micromanage both the kitchen and front of the house. She stopped scheduling kitchen staff to save money and was working in the kitchen herself. Food quality plummeted. Customers became irate at how long of a wait it was 
and word spread quickly in the small town. Eventually, a select few regulars became our only customers. More hours got cut, waitresses and kitchen staff were let go, the owner was now drinking at the bar and at the same time was waitressing and cooking. This was all in the matter of a month. So one night that month, it was exceptionally nice out and we had a lot of boaters in the area. We had a pier near the bar where boats could dock and walk into the restaurant. A large group had walked in on this night and they were both very clearly over intoxicated. I immediately cut them off to which they made a very large stink enough that the owner's husband came over to ask what happened. I explained that I had cut the group off and wasn't going to serve them, to which the owner's husband decided to take their drink orders and serve them anyway. Obviously, money was tight, so they didn't care about the rules. Next day, the owner pulled me into the office and accused me of stealing 50 bucks out of the till the previous night. I knew this to be a lie, a lie that could be easily disproven because there's a camera located directly over the till that synced to the time code on the POS. I was fired on the spot. 100% I believe this was because I was refusing to serve customers, thereby damaging their bottom line. I was really miffed to be accused of doing something I didn't do, and more upset that she used this lie she made up as an excuse to fire me. Because the stipulation of her having her liquor license was me working at the bar as a manager, I emailed the liquor control board when I got home and informed them of the rules being broken at the bar. A liquor inspector came to meet me later that week and took a statement. He then paid a surprise visit to the bar and was able to witness all of the things that I informed him, including the owner being both on site and being involved in the business, serving minors and serving intoxicated persons. The liquor inspector slapped them with a very large fine, north of $50,000. Their liquor license was suspended and the owner was too broke to pay the fine and was forced to close the restaurant. I received threats from her for a while after that, but the revenge was absolutely worth it. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.